Hi, in this video we're going to look at uh, variance and standard deviation. So let me just get into it with an example here. Uh, so let's say that I got this probability distribution table and uh, I recognize that the sum of those probabilities is, is one. I do have a probability distribution table and I'm actually going to change those fractions to, uh, to decimal values. So I've got, uh, I've got this discrete random variable and uh, first of all, we, we've already talked about what the expected value is of the random variable. It's just the sum product. So when I do that, that's uh, again, that's the uh, uh, expected value and also referred to as the mean of the random variable. So I'll use a mu for mean. And when I take the sum product, then I'm going to multiply the 990 times the 0.3 bar and, and, and so forth, add them all together, the sum product like we've done before, uh, and we get 1,000. So the mean of this random variable is 1,000. So now with respect to variance, which is what I'm getting into with this, with this video, when I talk about variance, what I'm really asking is what is kind of the variation of the random variable about the mean? The mean is 1,000, and, and what, what kind of observations do I see? How close are they to the mean? How often does that happen? That sort of thing. And so when we, when we try to kind of think about the variation of the random variable about the mean, maybe what we would do is we would say, okay, well, we look at the different observations uh, of the random variable. In other words, the support of the random variable. I've got a 990, and so uh, I can look at, well, how far is the 990 away from the mean? And then how far is the 1,000, the next uh, value in the support, away from the mean? And how far is the, tw 10, uh, the next ob observation, 1,020, away from the mean? And so maybe I would uh, think about, you know, just looking at differences between the, uh, the, the values in the support of the random variable to the mean and then, and then, you know, maybe even, you know, thinking about adding those up. But of course, if I do something like that, I haven't taken into account the probabilities or the, you know, the frequencies at which I'm expecting to see the observations. So maybe I should take these values that I just calculated and multiply those by the, the relative frequencies or the probabilities with which they occur. And if I did something like that, then, then that might be our, you know, our initial thought process on, on trying to calculate, calculate some variation of the random variable about the mean. But if I do that, look at that first, uh, the, the first uh, set of parentheses, the 990 minus 1000 end up with a negative 10. And, and the last term, the 1020 minus 1000, I got a, a, a plus 20. And so that the minus 10 is kind of canceling off with the plus 10, with the plus 20 here. And actually, if I, if I went through this, this calculation, I would end up with a zero. Uh, and, and of course, I, you know, I, I'm not trying, I don't want to measure variation uh, by having an output of a zero when there's obviously some variation around the mean. So what we could do then is, is instead of, you know, uh, in, that first, in that first term there where I have a minus 10, uh, that minus 10 is representing that there is some variation from the mean. Uh, there's a, a 10 units of variation from the mean, uh, but I've got it in as a negative. And so uh, what I, I could kind of uh, capture, recapture the variation by let's square those values and then uh, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't be in the situation where these negatives are offset in the positives. Uh, the, the, the values that are less than the mean having some variation that offsets variation where the value is, is, is greater than the mean. So I could square both sides and that's actually what we're going to do uh, in order to define uh, the variance. And when I go through this calculation now that I've squared the, uh, the difference between the, the observation or the, the, the value in the support with the mean, take the difference and then square it, then multiply it times its relative uh, uh, frequency or probability and take a sum product there, I get a 100 in this case. And that's actually what's going to be the, uh, the variance for this, this random variable. So I'm going to end up with uh, a 100. Now backing up though, where did the minus 10 squared come from? Again, it came from taking the, the value of the random variable, which was a 990 and subtracting a 1000. And, and likewise, those other values that are being squared, the parts in parentheses are, are coming from taking the value of the random variable, subtracting 1,000, which is the mean, and, and then squaring it and taking a sum product. Well, that's the expected value. So that's, that's actually how we're going to define then the variance of a random variable. So the variance of the random variable, and go back to the last line here, is going to be the expected value of the square of the of the 
of cap X minus mu. Uh, so variance uh, is going to be represented two ways, uh, denoted two ways. The VAR parentheses X is going to be the variance of the random variable. And also there's this uh, other notation that uses uh, the Greek letter sigma. That's a Greek letter sigma squared. So that's a square of sigma. Uh, so sigma squared is represent is the same as the variance. It just represents the, it denotes the same as the variance, and the variance is defined to be uh, the expected value of the square of cap x minus uh, mu. So in this case, like I showed in uh, an earlier uh, slide, uh, for this particular example, the variance of the random variable is 100. Okay, so let's look at another example. Let's say that uh, I have this this second. Uh, uh, discrete random variable. Same. I still got three values in the support of the random variable. Now the values are uh, the values in the support are 500, 1,000, and 1,500, and the probabilities are 0 0.32, 0 0.36, and 0.32 uh, respectively. The the when I'm calculating the variance, so my my goal here is to calculate the variance of this random variable. But your first step is going to be to calculate what the mean is of the random variable. So the mean is just the sum product of the random variable, and when I do that, I get a thousand. So I actually get the same mean as I do f as uh, the, the the mean as for the mean in the first example. The, so the mean here is is 1,000. But now I'm going to look at uh, the variance, and I, I'm going to take the square of cap x minus the mean, which is 1,000. So now the mean is 1,000. So I'm going to take the value uh, 500 and subtract 1,000 and square it. I'm going to take the value 1,000. Uh, that's the, the second value of the random variable. Subtract the mean, which is 1,000. I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to take 1,500 and subtract the 1,000, the mean, and square that. And then take the sum product. And this is what I get when I, when I do this. And then the parentheses there, if you, the 500 minus 1, 1,000 is, 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 is negative 500, the 1,000 minus 1,000 is 0, the 1,500 minus 1,000 is, is 500. And so I get this expression, uh, and when I go through the arithmetic here, I'll get 160,000 for that. So I've got this random variable that has the same, both random variables have the same mean, but the random variables have different variances. The variance of the uh, first random variable is 100, the variance of the second random variable is 160,000, quite a bit difference. But let's look at the random variables. Remember how we were defining variances as the, uh, as the variation of the random variable about, uh, about the mean. So look at how is, the, how is the random vari... You know, look at the values of the random variable and how much do they vary away from the mean. And so if you'll look at the second random variable, the mean in both cases is 1,000. But the first random variable, the other values are 990 and 1020, pretty close to 1,000 relative to the second random variable, whose values are 500 and 1,500 away from, um, or, or the values are of the random variable, 500 and 1,500, where the mean was 1,000. So in the first random variable, the mean is, uh, both random variables, the mean is 1,000. In the first one, the, the values are 990, 1,000, and 1020, pretty close to 1,000 compared to the second random variable where the values are 500, 1,000, and 1,500, uh, relatively speaking, farther away from the mean of 1,000. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful here because not only are you, do we need to look at the values of the random variable and how much they vary away from the mean, but we also need to look at the probability of observing those, those certain values. So the 0.32, the 0.36, and the 0.32 say, uh, it's uh, pretty likely to see those values of 500 that is a, a long ways away from the mean, or 1500, which is again, relatively long ways away from, from the mean. And you know, with probabilities of 0.32, it's, you know, uh, pretty likely to see those sorts of observations. Uh, and what I mean by that is let me change the second example. Let's say that I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the same support for the random variable at 500, 1,000, and 1,500. But look, I changed the probabilities now to uh, 0. 0.0002 is the probability that you see an observation is 500 or, or 1,500. And 0.9996 is the probability that the observation is 1,000. So even though, um, uh, you know, 1,000 a, a is, is going to be the mean in the second, in this random variable also, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the 500 and the 1,500 are, relatively speaking, 
you know, large variations away from the mean, but they're very unlikely to happen. So that's part of the, you know, the probabilities play a part in this calculation too. And I'm going to leave it to you to show that the mean for this random variable is 1000 and the variance of this random variable is 100, just like the variance of the random variable in the, in the first table. So it's kind of interesting, uh, uh, example here that you get two different random variables. They have the same mean and the same uh, variance, but they're, they're very different uh, from one another. So that's another uh, point of, of the example that I was trying to make here. Okay, but let's go back to the, uh, the, the example that I had the first where the, uh, the, the variance or the spread of the, of the observations, the, the support is spread out um, you know, from 500 to 500, 1,000 and 1,500. So it's kind of a spread out, uh, observations kind of spread out, kind of likely to happen. And that's going to give you a bigger variance. Uh, in this case, a variance of uh, this second example of 160,000. Okay, let's do one more example uh, in another table. Now in this table, one thing that I want to uh, recognize with this third table is that uh, I'll let you do the arithmetic. It's not hard to see that the mean for this third random variable is also going to be 1,000. And one one observation that I'd like to point out first is that the mean does not have to be, and I mentioned this the first time we talked about the mean, the mean does not have to be a value in the support of the random variable. So uh, for this third case, I have uh, only have two values of, of the random variable. The random variable is either a 500 equal to a 500 or a 1500. Uh, the mean ends up in this case is a thousand, but it's not part of the support of the random variable. There's no reason that it has to be the, a, a value in the support of the random variable. But now we're talking about variance again, and, the, and variance again is a measure of, of um, you know, the variation of the values in the support of the random variable from the mean, you know, how far away, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So um, if you look at um, the second and third cases here, the second and third tables, uh, both have a, a mean of 1000. And now my question to you is before I actually show you the answer here, what do you think the variance of the random variable in the third table uh, uh, is compared to the variance of the random variable in the second table? Should it be more or less? And uh, I hope that uh, by this conversation uh, and, and based on, you know, how far is it, are, are the values from the mean uh, to, together with how likely you are to see the, those values, I hope that uh, you will uh, say that the variance for the third random variable will be a little bit larger than the variance uh, for the second uh, the random variable in the second table, and it is. I'm going to leave it to you to show that the variance there is going to be 250,000. Okay, so uh, those are a few examples. Uh, I'd like to go back to this definition of what variance is. It's the uh, uh, the second. Mo it's the uh, the expected value of the square of uh, the cap x minus mu. So that's going to be the uh, uh, the definition. That's how we define the. Uh, the random variable, and this is sometimes called it's the uh, second moment uh, about the mean. Is it, you might hear those words, second moment about the mean. So this is not a raw moment, but the second moment about the mean. Okay, so now I want to def I want to derive for you another very useful formula that we use for uh, when calculating variances, and it's just applying some algebra here and uh, the fact that the expected value is a linear operator. So if you actually square out cap x minus mu, uh, algebraically you get cap x squared minus two times cap x at times mu plus a mu squared. And then we can use the fact that we got a linear operator, expected expectation is a linear operator. And so I take a term by term expected value. And then in the middle term, the expectation of two times cap x times mu, see the mu is a constant. It's the expected value of cap x that we've already done. So it's a constant. I can factor out a two mu from that second uh, from the second uh, term in that last expression. And then actually I can also use the fact that the expected value of a constant is the constant to say that the expected value of, cap, uh, I'm sorry, the expected value of mu squared is just equal to, uh, to mu squared. 
Okay. The next thing I recognize is that the expected value of cap X in that in the in, that I have highlighted in red. Again, that's that was the first part of the calculation for uh, for variance, and that's just our mu. That's exactly what mu is. And so those last two terms are really like terms. I got a minus two mu squared, and then plus a mu squared, which ends up being just a minus mu squared. So this is the formula. However, it's usually written a little bit different way. We we back substitute in that the mu is equal to the expected value of cap x and we write it this way. So let me clean up the, the slide a little bit and give you the second formula for the variance of a uh, random variable, a way to calculate the variance of the random variable. And it's, it's a, in fact, I probably use this, this last uh, expression uh, to calculate the variance uh, more often than I do the original definition. And if you think about it in words, the first term of that expression, the last expression that you see there after the equal sign, the first term is just the second moment of the random variable. And then the second term, which you're subtracting, the second term is the square of the first moment. So in words, this will be the second moment minus the square of the first moment. And that's kind of how you'll hear me, hear me say variance, you know, what the variance is. Uh, in, in a lot of future videos, I'll just say, well, the variance is going to be the second moment minus the square of the first moment. And this is what I mean by that. Okay, let's do a, a, an example here. One more example, or come back to this example uh, that I've got. Uh, uh, this is the same example that I started with earlier where we had a mean of 1,000 and a variance of 100. And so um, we, we went through and we defined what the variance is. And now what I want to show you is that you're going to get the same numeric value if you'll use the uh, the formula that we just that we just derived which is the second moment minus the square of the first moment uh, so for this example that I have the first moment of course is is the mu value the mean it's 1000 so now let's look at the uh, 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 that's the first moment now let's look at the second moment uh, the second moment of course is you take the square of the capex values and then take the sum product with their probabilities and when you do that you'll get the uh, what number is that there? 1, 100, well, 1, 100, it looks like. And so when I substitute that back in uh, for the uh, uh, second moment, uh, you'll get 100, just like we did before when we used the definition. Okay, let's look at the second example that we had. Uh, the mean was 1,000 for this second example also. Uh, but now I want to use our new, our new formula for calculating variance. I want to look at the second moment now of this uh, random variable in the, in the uh, second table. And so I take the square of the values of cap X and then take the sum product with the probabilities. And I'll get, what number is that? 1,160,000. And so when I plug those, those numbers back in for the second moment and the first moment, uh, you get exactly the same number that we had before, which was that the, uh, the variance is 160,000. And finally, let's do the third one just to, you know, for completeness, let's do the third example that we had. The mean was 1,000 in the th third example. If I look at the second moment in the third example, I'll get uh, 1,250,000. So when I subtract from the 1,250,000, the second moment, the square of the first moment, uh, which is a million, I get the 250,000, which we got before. Again, same numbers that we had. Uh, those are all the same numbers that we had before. So um, uh, the title of the video was Variance and Standard Deviation. So I should mention what the standard deviation is. I haven't mentioned that yet, but that's very easy because the variance is the hard part and calculate the standard deviation. The standard deviation is just defined to be the square root of what the variance is. And so you can kind of see now why the notation I highlighted in red, why the variance we denoted with a square, the sigma squared. Sigma is actually used the, the, the Greek letter S for sigma because it's representing the standard deviation. So you take the square root of sigma squared, you get, you, you get the, uh, the sigma, which is the standard deviation of the random variable. One comment that I don't have on here I just thought about it is that uh, a lot of times um when you see this, a lot of times people think when you see the square root number, the square root symbol, that it's uh, a plus or minus number. Like, what's the square root of nine? It's not plus or minus three. It's just three. Square. When you see a square root symbol, it means the, 
the, the principal or primary or positive square root of the number. And so uh, standard deviation is always going to be a positive number. Uh, the, the variance, of course, is always going to be a positive number, too. We'll, I'll get into that in a later video, actually, when I talk about some properties, other properties of variance. So anyway, the again, the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. And um, uh, the variance can be defined one of two ways. It can be defined as the expected value of the square of cap x minus the mean, or it can be uh, you can you can use the formula that it's the second moment minus the square of the first moment. Okay, uh, that does it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.